every year as we do these concerts, I try and find something out of the music that you just heard. By the way, you can tell I've lost my voice. Don't be alarmed. I don't think it's under any of your chairs, but if it is, you can give it back. But every year I go through the lyrics and I try and find something that I can maybe, I don't know, sit on. And this year comes from this song you just heard. And it's the second, I guess, verse that they sing, Night of glory, so divine. Ageless king stepped into time to seek and save a heart like mine. And I thought that that just encapsulates what but really Christmas is all about for those of us who, who understand that there is a God, that he has revealed himself in a way that lets us know him, and that he sent his son into this world so that we can not only know about him, but we can know him, and more importantly, he can know us as children, as beloved sons and daughters, through faith in the one whose, whose birth we celebrate. But that phrase, Night of glory, you know, why, why not night of wonder? Well, some songs have used that before. Night of celebration, night of awe, night of all kinds of things. And for Mary, it was a, it was, it was a night of pain. And for Joseph, it was, a, it was a night of, what am I going to do now? But the songwriter here said night of glory, and I started thinking about that word. It's not a word that we understand, even though we use it a lot. And theologically, I, I, I teach theology because I want to, believe it or not, and, and I, I'm into that world. And in theology, the word glory is understood as the sum total of all of God's attributes. So if you think about all the things that make up his nature, certainly his love, his goodness, his eternality, there never was a time when he was not, uh, his grace, his wrath, his justice, his omnipotence, he is all powerful, his omniscience, he knows everything. When you think about all that bundled up, that's what we say when we say he, he manifested his glory. He, he comes in such a way that is undeniable and yet not fully explainable. And that night was a night of glory. Why? Because an ageless king, in John 1 we hear that he was in the beginning. God the Son was in the beginning. In Genesis 1.1, in the beginning was God. Well, God the Son was already there. There never was a time when he wasn't. But he's all God. He's all the God there is. And yet there are not two gods or three gods. There's one. It's that amazing monumisterium, they call it, the magnificent mystery has two parts. Number one, that there is one God made up of three persons. But the second part is that one of those persons actually came, wrapped himself in flesh, and stepped into time. So when we say it was an ageless king, and he, it's a being who had never been and could never be contained by time, actually voluntarily and intentionally and joyfully stepped into time. Suddenly, there was a passage of time in God the Son's life. Now I know, this time of year, I don't know about you, but it's extremely busy for me. And time becomes, it's not an enemy, but it, it sure is a, a taskmaster, right? You gotta be someplace, especially if you do as many concerts as we do. There's rehearsals and there's tech, and you guys know what it's like to be rushed by time. Yes, you do, and so do you. And you've got parties and you've got shopping, You've got time and it's pressing in on you. <clears throat> what, did it, what did it take for the eternal God to say, I'm going to enter into time. I'm, I'm going to be bound by time. Great humiliation, great sacrifice that God would become like one that he had created. <clears throat> Why would he do that? Well, that last line in that, those three lines Night of glory, so divine, ageless king stepped into time. Why? To seek and save a heart like mine. Now that old, that old verbiage of seeking and saving has an Old Testament pedigree. 
in Ezekiel we read, and then God was talking through the prophet Ezekiel to the leaders of Israel, and he says, you're the shepherds of Israel. You're the ones who are supposed to be caring for my sheep, and yet, actually, you're not caring for them. You're actually brow browbeating them. <clears throat> Excuse me. You're actually taking advantage of them. There's nothing worse than when those who are supposed to guide and protect, feed and, and provide for, when they stop doing it and instead prey on those that they are lead. And so God interrupts them and he says, Thus says the Lord God, Behold, I myself will search for my sheep, and I will seek them out. As a shepherd seeks out his flock when he is among the sheep that have been scattered, so will I seek out my sheep. And Jesus and John, at one point he stands up and says, I'm that good shepherd. And later he would go to Jericho, which at that point was not a place that a lot of Jews would go. And he went to a man's house named Zacchaeus. Many of you probably learned the little song when you were kids. He climbed up in a sycamore tree to see him. And Jesus saw him and said, Hey, come on down, I'm going to your house. And when he went into the house of Zacchaeus, the, the people went nuts. They said, Jesus, don't you know this man is the chief tax collector? He is working for the Romans against his own people. And in that day, the Romans said to each tax collector, you have to collect so much, and if you collect more, you get to keep the difference. And so here was one who was a leader who was actually preying on the sheep. Why would you go there, Jesus? This man's a sinner. And this is what Jesus said. He went to Zacchaeus' house. He, he told him who he was. He brought the gospel. He pointed out his sin, and Zacchaeus said, I... I'm going to change, I repent. And Jesus said to him, Today salvation has come to this house. Why? For the Son of Man came to seek and to save the lost. There it is. Night of glory, so divine. Ageless king stepped into time. Why? To seek and save a heart like mine and yours. I saw a bumper sticker the other day, and uh, it said, there's a lot of bumper sticker theology going on, you know that. <laughs> it said, all who wander are not lost. And I know that probably it was put on a car who uh, some guy who likes to hike and likes to just say, hey, I'll be gone for six weeks and goes to Europe and doesn't know what he's doing and just wanders around. And, but I started thinking, you know, unless you know where you're going, you are lost. Unless you know where life is going, you need a shepherd. We recently studied Psalm 23 here at Grace Baptist, and we realized that we all need a shepherd. We think we can make it on our own, but you can't. You don't know the future. You don't know tomorrow. You don't know what it will be like. We all need a shepherd, and I guarantee that not just any shepherd will do. You need the Lord Jesus Christ as your shepherd. Because if you follow him, he will take care of you. He will be for you. And he proved it that night outside of Bethlehem when he came. And what we can say about that is this. Our God, the one we've been waiting for, guess what? He has come. 